So I am very proud tonight to present Erase Racism's Abraham Krasnov Courage and Commitment Award to George L. Duffy III. He is being honored for his singular contributions to the struggle against racism while providing a range of critical services to students, families, teachers, administrators in Long Island's 125 school districts. Uh, George Duffy is a retired school superintendent who served in that leadership position in the uh, Riverhead Central School District and the Seaford Union Free District. As superintendent, he devoted his time to improving the social and emotional learning, as well as the academic lives of all his students. He was a particularly fierce advocate for those students who came from less advantaged homes and communities. He has always fought hard to see that every student has equal access to educational equity and opportunity. Uh, in his early career in the Kings Park Central School District, he taught science and chemistry, physics, and became the science department head, then assistant principal, then middle school principal, and finally high school principal. He insisted on high standards for all students that were no exceptions, and the students knew that. In July of 2012, Mr. Duffy was appointed executive director and CEO of Scope Education Services. For the six years prior to that, he was Scope's deputy director for student ser services, where he distinguished himself with adding and improving core services in pre-K before school and after school programs through long, throughout Long Island. During the pandemic, Mr. Duffy somehow managed to keep essential before and after school programs open and staffed in those districts where the populations were hardest hit and the programs most vitally needed. Administrators and teachers, students and parents across Long Island and across the state of New York have affirmed that George Duffy's firm but gentle leadership has been an inspiration for local and state educators and decision makers as they seek to achieve educational equity for all. Please join me in welcoming and honoring George L. Duffy III. I promise to uh, keep my remarks uh, very brief tonight. I know the hour is getting late. Um, I want to thank Elaine and the committee for selecting me to receive this award. I, I'm not sure we didn't get this wrong, though. Um, Courage and Commitment Award, I'm not so sure it shouldn't have gone to those nurses. I, I can't imagine anyone that demonstrated more courage and commitment over the last year and a half in the nurses and the medical profession. So I applaud your efforts and thank them for everything they do. Uh, it's amazing what they've done. I want to, uh, as I said, thank Elaine and her committee for this award. Uh, when Elaine called me and told me that I was a recipient of this award, it kind of blew me away. To just be mentioned in the same vein as previous recipients like Dr. William Johnson, the Honorable Re uh, Regent Roger Tillis, the Honorable Mayor of New York, David Dinkins, Dr. Warner Lewis, to name just a few outstanding people that I've had the privilege of knowing and working with over the years. They're truly not just outstanding educators, they're outstanding people. And I thank them for all of the commitment they've made and all the support they've provided me over the years. The work that a race, racism performs on a daily basis is nothing less than heroic. 
and I'm proud and pleased to have contributed to their efforts, efforts, even if it's only in a small way. There is no doubt that this is important work and that much remains to be accomplished. I want to thank all the, my colleagues and employees from Scope that are here with me tonight and work with me day in and day out. Without these people, and as many of them here tonight, we wouldn't be able to accomplish the work that we accomplish and provide the services that we provide. Last year, year and a half ago, when this pandemic hit, we were notified on, a, I believe, a Saturday that schools were shut down. Sunday night, the people that are sitting here amongst us were in my office about 7 o'clock on a Sunday night planning for programs that we could continue to offer for the children finding ways to provide childcare for over 800 children at no fee for their parents, but with the commitment of the school districts and the help of the school districts and the Superintendents Association, over 800 children received childcare throughout the pan pandemic. That doesn't happen by accident, it happens by hard work and by the commitment of the people at SCOPE. It also happens with the support of my board of directors, and there's a few people here tonight, Dr. Warner Lewis, Dr. Robert Dillon, Mr. Henry Grishman, and, Mr. and Dr. John Stemmel, four members that are here, and I thank them for their support, their outstanding support during this time. I'm really humbled to receive this award, and I ask myself why. Why would it be me? Why would they think that I deserve this award? I just feel like uh, I do my job, I try to do it well, and I try to make a difference. But there's a lot of people that do their job well and try to make a difference. You know, I was born in 1951 to a uh, large Irish American family, and we didn't have a lot, we didn't have much money, um, but we had a supportive environment our parents, my parents were there to support the efforts that we made. But my dad moved around a lot, and before I finished school, I'd attended school in five different states, six different school districts, maybe about two years, three years in one district and move on. It wasn't an easy thing to adjust to. And in high school, I, we finally landed in Kings Park, New York, after living in I grew up most of my life in the South. And I can still remember my first meeting or my meeting with my guidance counselor. It may have been my first meeting. I was in 10th grade and my guidance counselor said to me, what do you think you want to do with your life? What do you want to do when high school's over? And I said, well, I, I guess I want to go to college. And she had my records laid out on the table in front of her and she said, <laughs> she kind of chuckled and said, uh, well, you might be a good football player you might be a good wrestler, but you're not doing much in the classroom. And I walked out of that meeting and I said, oh boy, what do I do now? How do I go home and tell my parents this? But I had support. I had coaches, I had teachers, I had my guidance counselor who gave me support and a family that was behind me. And I was fortunate. I finished high school, went on to college, ended up being a teacher, and 22 years after that meeting, when I was a middle school principal, that guidance counselor was still working in the school district. And my wife said to me, or said to her, do you remember the meeting you had with my husband back then? And she said, oh yeah, I sure do. What a mistake I made. And I happened to be standing there, and I said, Mrs. McNeil, that was not a mistake. You did me the biggest favor anyone ever did me in all my time in school, you set me on a different course. You made a difference. And later on, when I was finished college and I was trying to decide what i do, and I actually thought I was going into a career in the military. I never thought I was going to be a teacher. Um, but as a teacher, I never forgot that meeting. I never forgot the people that spent time with me after that meeting to help me get where I was going. And I made a commitment that if this was the field that I was going to enter, that I would try to make a difference in the lives of children that didn't 
They weren't at the top of the class. They weren't successful in every endeavor. They weren't members of the National Junior Honor Society. They were the kids that needed a little bit extra. They needed a little bit of support. And that's, that's been my commitment in the years that I've been in education. I told you I spent my years in the South, early years in the South. I remember being a child in the 1950s and in the early 60s when things weren't the way they are right now today, or at least I didn't think so. I remember having friends that I played with in school who couldn't go to the same restaurants I went to, who went up to an ice cream store, and I was old enough to read at that point, and I could see a sign that said whites only and a sign with a, an arrow that said colored, and you had to go, they had to go to a different window to buy an ice cream cone. I never understood why. These were my friends. Then the 1960s, the Civil Rights Movement, and all the things that occurred during that time that I was old enough to witness and remember. In 1963, the, the March on Washington and Dr. King's speech. In 1965, the marches from Selma to Montgomery. I remember seeing people lose their lives, but they had a cause, and they were speaking up. Not an easy thing for those people. It's 50 years later, and I've been in education my whole adult career. It's 2021. It's been over 50 years since that time. And we still, on Long Island, live in one of the most racially segregated areas in the country. Where all the children do not have the same opportunities, where conditions of the schools that many attend are very poor, where the quality of instruction and the programs offered are inferior to those of children in a neighboring school district. And I continue to ask why. How do we let this happen in 2021? How do we change these things? Of course, one way we can change these things is doing what we're doing right now. Support this organization that works so hard and the efforts that Elaine and her staff make to make change, sustain change. The other way we can do it, the other way we can all help, is for good people to be willing to stand up and do the right things in their own daily lives. In their workplaces, their neighborhoods, and their schools. Just ordinary people willing to speak when they see an injustice. Lend a helping hand or treat others with kindness and civility. To assist and support those whom otherwise may not have support just ordinary people doing the right thing. I applaud the efforts of everyone here tonight, and my pledge is to continue to support the journey we are on together, with hopes that one day, Dr. Dr. King's dreams will be a reality, and there will be no need for organizations like a race, racism to exist. My staff here from Scope, my staff here from Scope probably know something about me that most of you don't know. I like to be a, I'm kind of an amateur poet. And they laugh at me when I write my little poems and sometimes send them out to the staff. But actually today I sat down and I just composed a little, a very short poem. If only. If only the sights and sounds of hatred could disappear. What beautiful visions and music for our eyes and our ears. If only minds and hearts were colorblind, where peace and love could exist for all of time. If only freedom and equity were to exist for all of us, where Rosa Parks could have sat any place on that bus. If only school hallways were truly open to all, 
and not have frightened little Ruby Nell Bridges Hall. If only Martin's dreams were not just a dream, we are all brothers and sisters played on the same team. If only housing was open with no discrimination, only stronger would be this great nation. If only words of hatred existed in the long ago past, perhaps equality, justice, and peace may truly have a chance to last. If only all good people could speak without trepidation or fear, then evil and injustices may have a chance to soon disappear. If only bigotry, hate, and racism were non-existent words, if only. Many thanks to everyone here tonight. May you have a wonderful, happy holiday season, and may God bless you all. Thank you.